Hello there, YouTube viewer. I'm not gonna waste your time with a long intro because I have a feeling we're gonna be here for a while. Wobbuffet has the unique gimmick of not being able to learn any attacking moves. Instead, it opts to take a beating and dish it back twice as hard. The only four moves Wobbuffet can learn are Counter, Mirror Coat, Safeguard, and Destiny Bond. As this is a solo run, that last move is completely useless to me as a draw in the main game still counts as a loss for the player, losing both your money and your dignity. As this is the pre-abilities gen, Wobbuffet has yet to learn its broken ability Shadow Tag, taking it from a never used Pokemon to the Uber tier, where it resides along with Mewtwo and Rayquaza. With that fact of the day out of the way, let's get to what you came here for. Can you be Pokemon Crystal? only using a Wobbuffet. Here's a quick rundown of the rules. Feel free to pause if needed. After downgrading from a Chikorita to a Wobbuffet, there's the sentence I never thought I'd say, I quickly run to my first problem. Leveling up. You can't control what a wild Pokemon will use. It might use Growl five times in a row before it finally decides to attack. That's five turns of wasted PP and it isn't long before I'm running back to the Pokemon Center to restore my PP. And trying to deplete my PP so I can struggle the population down to zero is an even bigger chore. It isn't long until I'm broke, thanks to wasting all my money on potions. At this point in the game, I found the best Pokemon to grind on is Poliwag. This early on, the only move it knows is Bubble, making prediction, well, easy. And since all War type moves are special in this generation, all I need to do is spam Mirror Coat on all the poor Poliwags. I still have to run back to the Pokemon Center a million times to heal, though. After leveling up a bit, I go for round one against my nameless rival. This one is also fairly simple. Since he just stole his Cyndaquil, it has zero training under its belt, and only knows Tackle and Leer. I just gotta hope it doesn't use Leer too much, and right when it goes for Tackle, I counter it. Thankfully, my opponent opts to attack after the first Leer making for an easy KO. I opt not to grind on some more Poliwag and head straight for Bellsprout Tower, where I challenge a bunch of monks and their Bellsprout. Like with Poliwag, these Bellsprout only know Vine Whip, a special grass move. Thanks to more easy prediction, I easily wipe the floor with them. Now we're ready for Falconer. He was actually easier than some of the trainers I faced beforehand, mainly because he suffers from good AI so I can almost guarantee he'll attack me as opposed to wasting 5 turns on using String Shot or Growl. The only thing I was worried about was Mud Slap. It's not a strong move by any means, but every time it hits, it lowers accuracy. Luckily for me, it didn't go for Mud Slap, and I take out his two birds without consuming my berry. After defeating Falconer, grinding on dumb trainers and wild Pokemon becomes much easier. And we can thank Hoppet for that. It's only one of the very few Pokemon we meet early game that knows no attacking moves. Now I can waste all my PP without worrying about being poisoned or knocked out. Even better, at the Pokemon Center before Union Cave, I talked to this fisherman and grabbed the old rod. My plan, for now, is to use struggle on random trainers and wild Pokemon and save Mirror Coat and Counter for the gym leaders and other important battles. I accidentally triggered the battle against my rival when I was heading to the second gym, hence why I'm struggling here. I got some bad luck here, his Ghastly paralyzed me with Lick, and Zubat confused me with Supersonic. When Quilava comes out, I only had 9 HP left. No way I was going to win that one. Then I decided to test my luck with Counter and Mirror Coat. Not only that, Safeguard will- Shit. I forgot. Since Counter is a fighting type move, Counter does not work against ghost types. Since his ghastly doesn't know any special moves, I can't hit him until I waste all my PP. With no other option, I let my rival take me out. Again. I'd figure I had better luck against Bugsy. And it's here where I realize how much I messed up the game's mechanics. By that I mean, weaker Pokemon are much harder to take out, and stronger Pokemon are a breeze. Take this Metapod. It deals 2 HP of damage to me, making my counter only deal 4 HP of damage back to it. 
Couple that with Tackle's accuracy not being the greatest, by the time I finally take out Bugsy's Metapod, I've already depleted two thirds of Counter's PP. On the other side of the coin, when Scyther, a much stronger Pokemon comes out, knowing a stronger move in Fury Cutter, it goes down in three hits. Sadly, he still has Kakuna left, and much like its butterfly counterpart, it knows a move that deals next to no damage. The only difference is, Poison Sting has a chance to, well, poison me. And if I don't have a safeguard up, there's a good chance I'll get poison. Sadly, I can't counter poison damage, I dake. And I don't have enough PP on counter to take out her final Pokemon. I hope that maybe I can waste all my PP and just struggle it to death, but it takes me up before that could happen. Next time, I go in with the struggle strategy, and it does make Metapod easier, but Scyther wipes the floor with me. Then I had an idea. Waste the PP of moves I don't need in this battle, mainly Mirror Move and Destiny Bond, then keep the PP of the moves I do need. That way, if I run out of PP with Counter or Safeguard, I won't have to worry about wasting 30 more turns before I can finally attack again. And much like the previous battle, I had enough PP for on Counter to take out his Metapod and Scyther. I keep one PP for Safeguard, just in case I get poisoned. And then, after wasting what little PP I have left, I was able to finish off Kakuna with Struggle. With no other choice, I go in for a rematch against my rival. I go right in with the Struggle strategy, as I know it won't get past this Ghastly otherwise. And as long as Koalaba doesn't burn me, I should be okay. It doesn't, and I move on through Helix Forest. I didn't want to use the Struggle strategy against big battles unless I feel like I absolutely had to. And Whitney was one of those battles. Her Clefairy, of course, knows Metronome, making it impossible to predict what move it might use. When I go back in with Struggle, Clefairy isn't the problem, but her Miltake is why I did not want to use Struggle. As I'm sure you know, her Miltake knows Rollout, that gets stronger with each consecutive hit. I could have racked up some serious damage with Counter, but as mentioned before, Clefairy shot down my plans leaving me little choice but to struggle. It takes me a few tries, but eventually I level up enough to tank her rollout and knock it out with struggle. Hey, it's my rival again! And again, he leads with a ghost type that knows no special moves. Leave me little choice but to struggle. Again. This time, Haunter has a new trick up its sleeve, or hand, curse. When a ghost type uses curse, it cuts the HP in half to put a curse on me. Said curse is losing a quarter of my health each turn. Top that off with struggle, and we're losing almost a third of my health each turn. And since Haunter is much faster than me, even my current level, I'm left with little choice but to grind until I'm faster than it. And then, hopefully, I can take it out in one hit. After yet again blowing all my money on potions, I'm ready for another round. This time, Haunter decides not to use curse and I'm able to take it out in two hits. And without that curse on me, the rest of this team goes down easily. Morty is my next obstacle. Thankfully, this will be the last time I'll have to worry about ghosts for a while. I equipped a mint berry and we're ready to go. His gaslight goes down in one shot. Haunter is a two hit KO, assuming he doesn't put a curse on me. But nine times out of 10, it probably will. Gengar's the reason I attach that berry to Wobbuffet. Its go-to strategy is Hypnosis and Dream Eater. As expected, it goes for Hypnosis and I consume my berry to wake up. Luckily for me, Hypnosis doesn't have the best accuracy. The next two attempts miss me and I'm able to finish it off. One more Haunter to go. But with that curse on me, it's gonna be close. After the recoil damage and curse, I'm down to 20 HP and is able to finish me off with Nightshade. On my next attempt, I crit his first Haunter, taking it out in one hit. Gengar keeps going for Hypnosis, and it keeps on missing. One more Haunter to go, and what do you know? I get another crit, taking it out in one hit, and now my fourth Gym Badge. Chuck is our next challenge, and this time, having a type advantage doesn't really help us. I spam counter against Primate, slowly chipping away at it as it tries to slowly chip away at me. His last Pokemon, 
Polyrath goes for Hypnosis, which luckily for me, misses. Not taking any chances, I use Safeguard, preventing any status moves for the next 5 turn. Now all I have to do is use Mirror Coat, as it attacks me with Surf. I figured it wouldn't go for Dynamic Punch since I have the type advantage, and with that correct prediction, I obtain my 5th badge. Now we go on to challenge Jasmine. Knowing her Magnemite new Thunder Wave, I immediately go for Safeguard. I chose wisely. For seeing a Thunderbolt, I go for Mirror Coat, taking out both her Magnemite. With Steelix, I knew it didn't know any special moves, so I go for Counter. Its best move, Iron Tail, isn't the most reliable move accuracy wise. It misses a good million times, but eventually, it does hit me, and I am able to counter it, getting my sixth badge. After struggling through Team Rocket, we face off against Price. He leads with Seal, who deals next to no damage to me, making my counters and mirror codes completely useless. Even worse, if its health gets low enough, Seal will rest off the damage. After literally nearly 15 minutes of trying to counter this, we are both reduced to struggling each other to death. I lost. Not my proudest moment. On my next attempt, I go right in with struggle. Seal becomes much easier. Next is Dugon, and I run into the same problems I had with Seal. Any damage I do to it gets rested off. Struggle is a 4 hit KO. I need a crit to take it out before it wakes up and uses rest again. I do eventually get said crit. Two in a row in fact. Finally is Piloswine. After beating myself, not like that you perverts, nearly to death, I'm on my last legs or whatever Wobbuffet has. I manage to get into KO range, but then Price uses a Hyper Potion and I knock myself out. It takes a couple more attempts, but I do manage to defeat Price. Barely. After going through a few more rocket grunts, I'm forced to go against another round against my rival. And at this point in the game, the real enemy here is status moves. Damage dealing moves I can easily counter back to my opponents. With status moves, I'm not so lucky. The worst are the ones that lower accuracy. Counter and mirror coat can be affected by it. If I'm put to sleep or paralyzed, it's a free turn for my opponent. If I go in with struggle, I have to worry about poison, curse taking off a quarter of my damage, and burn cutting my attack in half, weakening an already pathetic move. As for my rival, I am forced to go in with struggle because of his aforementioned haunter. It takes me a few attempts, but I do eventually get all the luck I need to nail another victory. After getting rid of the rest of Team Rocket, I face off against Claire for my 8th badge. This one was fairly easy. I start off by using Safeguard, making Thunder Wave and Dragon Breath secondary effect useless. All it's left to do is use Mirror Coat until I knock out all of her Pokemon. With all 8 Johto badges in hand, I make my way to the Elite Four. But first, I need to have one last battle against my rival. And yet again, my biggest obstacle is his Haunter's Curse. If it wasn't around, I could struggle through his whole team with little issues, but his Haunter's a thing and I have to deal with it. I go into the battle leaving only 1 PP for safeguard, so I can protect myself against status moves, but even with that, I still need to get a crit on Haunter to knock it out in one go. If I get cursed, I won't have enough HP to deal with his Typhlosion. I eventually get said crit and take out his Typhlosion. With all our PP still depleted, we are ready for the Elite Four. First up is Will. Since most of his Pokemon are Psychic types, he can't deal too much damage to me. The only thing that really scares me is Confuse Ray and Leech Seed from Executor. If Executor shoots his seeds at me, there's no possible way I can win this battle. Leech Seed zaps an eighth of my total HP, making my greatest stat my biggest liability. It will always heal more damage than I can dish out with Struggle. Near Coat wouldn't even work. His Pokemon just don't deal enough damage to me. He will still recover more damage than I can dish out. It's all pure luck here. As long as I don't get seated, I can get past Wu with little trouble. Koga is another trainer I was really worried about. Normally, where I go into a battle where I know their strategy is use status moves against me, I leave at least one safeguard in my back pocket. That way I can protect myself for a few turns. 
But since I have to face the Elite Four one after another, obviously that strategy is out of the question. And using Ether will score my PP by 10, making me have to waste 10 turns before I can use Struggle again. There's a lot of luck involved in this battle. If I get Toxic, the game's over. Poison will take me out before I can sweep his whole team. And with my weak attack stat and my even weaker damaging move, on average, I'm looking at a 3 to 4 hit KO. It takes me a few tries, but I manage to get the luck I need to move on to the next battle. Runo is actually a lot harder than I thought he'd be. The biggest problem I ran into was his Onyx's Sandstorm, dealing decent chip damage. Then Hitmonlee comes out and uses Swagger. Luck was on my side, thankfully, as I managed to get past the Confusion and finish this Hitmonlee off. Things are getting really close when my champ comes out. It seems that Arceus is looking down on us this time. As my confusion wears off, and I finish off Bruno's last Pokemon with just a shred of HP on my first try. Finally, we have Karen. And she's the reason why I went to the Elite Four with Struggle. Umbreon leads, and 9 times out of 10, it'll go for a Sand Attack. Annoying. Murkrow is no problem, but her Houndoom is the first Pokemon I've come across that can actually hit me for decent damage. And eventually, it takes me out. After a few rematches, I eventually have enough HP to tank Houndoom's attacks, and then take it out. But her next Pokemon, Gengar, is even worse. No surprises for guessing why. Struggle takes it down to about half health, but then uses Curse to take itself out. When Vileplume comes out, all I need to do is sit there, watch, and wait for Curse to take me out. It doesn't take long. With a bit more HP and a lot of lucky misses, I barely hang on and manage to take out her last Pokemon. Now it's time for the final challenge in the Johto region. Lance. With my PP restored, the first thing I do is use Safeguard. Only to learn that Gyarados doesn't actually have anything that can inflict status damage on me. From here, it's all a guessing game. I have zero idea what move he'll use. You think with the rain up, he spams Surf. But no, sometimes he doesn't feel like surfing, and will go for Hyper Beam or... Flail? Really? Flail? It's all luck here. I eventually manage to take it out. Then Lance sends out his first Dragonite, and it's at this point that I always need to have a safeguard up, as it will always, and I mean always, will go for Thunder Wave if I don't. Unfortunately, my PP for Counter Miracote is starting to run dangerously low, and I know I won't have enough to get me through the rest of the battle. Considering this battle is a dead run, I saw Free Set and going with Struggle. To my surprise, Struggle actually deals more damage than Counter Miracote. I make it all the way to his final Dragonite just on Struggle, but sadly, I was paralyzed and super low on HP. It finishes me off with Outrage. And it's the same story for the next couple of attempts. The only thing I can hope for is that I don't lose too many turns to paralysis, because the odds are stupid high that I will be paralyzed. I managed to get a run when my HP isn't super low. Dragonite goes for Outrage. If I can take it and not lose any turns to paralysis, I just might be able to finish it off. Luck seems to be on my side as Dragonite gets confused after two turns of Outrage. It hurts itself, and I get through my paralysis to finish it off. And with that final struggle, I managed to conquer the Johto region. And it only took me holy shit! Well, at least I can rest easy for a bit. It is what I like to say, but I know I still have a few things I need to do. <sighs> I'm not going to go into detail about my time in Kanto, as some of the gym leaders in Kanto come close to the strength of Lance's team. And for the most part, I sweep them all with most of my HP intact, thanks to the leftovers. The only exception to that, unsurprisingly, is Blue. His team is stronger than Lance's, with his Pokemon being in the mid to late 50s. With the leftovers I attain in Celadon, we go right in with Struggle. He leads with Pidgeot. For some reason, the only move it goes for is Mirror Move. Make it use Struggle against me. With the level gap, however, it does next to no damage to me, making taking it out much easier. 
Things are going well until he sends out Rhydon, who uses Sandstorm, making my leftovers useless for the next few turns. I can only hope at this point that Struggle will crit him a couple of times. With Rhydon out of the way, he sends out Executor, and it knows Leech Seed. It's well over again. As you can guess, Leech Seed does more damage than I can deal, and I eventually get knocked out. After a few battles of constantly getting knocked out by his final Pokemon, I go with my PP Restore and see if I still had a better chance. I do, making it all the way to his Arcanine. It did help that Blue didn't go for Leech Seed this time. As long as Arcanine doesn't use Extreme Speed, as I have no PP left for counter at this point, I'll have enough HP to finish it off with Mirror Coat. It does just that, and I coat Flame Flower back to its face getting my final Kanto badge. Alright, it's time for the main event. Red. Of course, he leaves with Pikachu. I go for Safeguard knowing that I get status, I'll be in big trouble. But Pikachu is faster and lands a Thunder. It doesn't paralyze me and I get a Safeguard up. I'm safe. For now. The only two attacking move Red's Pikachu knows is Thunder and Quick Attack. I felt pretty confident that since Thunder is the stronger move, it would use that. And I was correct. The only drawback is that Miracle doesn't take Pikachu out in one shot. And even worse, it puts Pikachu's health in the full restore zone. With little choice, I repeat this process until Red runs out full restores. Espeon is next, and spams Psychic. I keep the pressure on with Miracle, taking it out with no issues. Snorlax is a Pokemon I was really afraid of. I was scared that this would turn into a war of PP if it used rest. Luckily for me, it kept using Body Slam, even when its HP was starting to get really low. With three counters, my biggest threat was out of the way. Now it's just the three candle starters left, starting with Charizard, who uses Flamethrower. All it takes a couple of Mirror Coats to knock it out. Next is Blastoise who starts by using Rain Dance. But the stronger the moves, the more trouble Red's Pokemon are in. It hits me with a Rain Boosted Surf, which I Mirror Coat back to him. It barely hangs on, but one more Mirror Coat takes it out. Last out is Venusaur, who goes for Giga Drain. Much like my leftovers, it has a way to recover health. I was pretty certain this was going to be a War of PP, but for some reason, on its third turn, it goes for Solar Beam. If it had kept on using Giga Drain, he could have drained all the PP out of Miracle, making me waste dozens of turns draining the rest of my PP before I can use Struggle, assuming it lived all of its attacks. But thanks to AI stupidity, I Mirror Coat the damage back to him, taking out Venusaur. With that, I have defeated Red on my first attempt, and defeating all of Crystal which only took me about 174 hours. Strong attacks against me were my greatest asset in this run, especially after I got the leftovers. I thought I'd be battling red for hours considering the trouble Lance and Blue gave me. But with no status moves, Curse or Leech Seed, which was by far my biggest weakness in this run, red had nothing to counter me with, and was forced to watch as I wipe his whole team with their own attacks. And with that battle of the way, I think it's safe to put down the Game Boy for a little while. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like what you saw and want to help me support this channel, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. It helps more than you know. It's for the algorithm, man. Anyway, enough of me shilling. I'm gonna go sleep, and I will see you all after my nap. Bye bye